Hello, I'm Richard Devaney from the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. Welcome to a video series of interviews that I conducted with senior executives from many different industries. The series is called Strategic Insights and the goal is to help you to understand what great CEOs are thinking about as the critical issues of today. Bob, thank you very much for coming to speak to my Advanced Competitive Strategy course and be part of my CEO Speaker Series. Uh, and thank you very much for doing this interview. Well, it's my pleasure. It's a, it's a beautiful day here at Tuck and Dartmouth, and I've always wanted to see Dartmouth, and, and I, the, the culture of Tuck is fantastic, so it's, it's a great opportunity for me to learn as well. I'm interested a little bit about your views about uh, competition and your philosophy of strategy. How do you consider yourself uh, competing? What, and what methods do you use to compete with Hasbro and Legos? Well, strategy is really important to me. Um, in fact, if you, if you look at our chief operating officer uh, at Mattel, he came out of strategic planning. I had a strategic planning job at Kraft Foods before I became CEO. So I think strategy and strategic planning is really important to develop uh, the next generation of leaders. Um, and so we think a lot about strategy. We do a, a board meeting that I just came from a week ago uh, where annually the board of directors at Mattel does an off-site two-day uh, meeting to talk about two things, business strategy and people strategy. And those are the most important uh, jobs that someone like I might have. So we compete broadly against all the toy companies in the world. We vie for that shopper's Christmas gift every year. And fortunately, we've come out on top uh, for most of the past couple of decades. But we're also increasingly competing with non-traditional toy companies. As kids have more opportunities, as there's more ways for them to engage and play, we need to be mindful of how kids play today if we're going to outperform the traditional competition of the Hasbros and the Legos. Is there any particular type of thought or particular author or guru that, uh, of strategy that you follow? Uh, who do you respect? Um, I respect the academicians in strategy because you know, they, they spend the time and energy thinking about it. But I also benchmark uh, largely well-run consumer goods companies. So uh, companies like Procter & Gamble or Colgate or Kraft Foods or Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, um, those are the, to me, sort of, if you will, the big boys of consumer goods marketing. And at Mattel, at the end of the day, we're a consumer goods marketing company. Um, we just happen to be in aisle number seven of your local Walmart instead of aisle number four, six, or 12, like um, uh, Colgate or Procter and Gamble might be. So we benchmark how they run their companies, what they're interested in, where they're going. Um, because if we can bring some of those principles or some of those ideas to the toy uh, industry, we'll maintain our leadership position. What percentage of your products each year are new or reinvented? Uh, at least 80%. And, and think, about, think about the toy business. You know, you never buy the same toy twice. So the average boy in this country owns 60 Hot Wheels cars. But a yellow Camaro is very different than a red Mustang, and we've got to figure out the Camaro and the Mustang and the color, because they don't buy two yellow Camaros. They want a yellow Camaro and a red Mustang, and so almost all of our products are new, and it's also uh, compounded by the fact that it's a very seasonal business. So half of the toys purchased uh, around the world and in this country are purchased around the Christmas holiday season. So we've got to come up with all of these new ideas, roughly 8,000 new products a year, get them uh, ideated, engineered, manufactured, shipped, distributed, and they need to be on shelves at Thanksgiving and they need to be off shelves at Christmas. So it's, it's a fun, dynamic, fast-moving business. So how do you do that? How do you manage an organization with that kind of dynamism? You, you probably rival the high-tech industry. We do in terms of speed. Um, and, and, and I like to think the toy business is part art and part science. There certainly is science, and the, the uh, advancements in information technology allow us to do things so much faster. So we can work on a toy idea here in the United States and have it engineered in uh, Asia tonight while we're asleep. 
Um, and it's, it's just a much faster process than it used to be. So the science has helped. You know, certainly predicting how many of a given toy will sell is now much more science than it used to be. But there's also an art side of the toy business. There's art in the product, creating the magic, if you will, of the toy. You know, to the child, there's some magical moment that comes through the toy, and that is sometimes art. And there's also art into managing the business. What toys are we going to make our bets on? Because, you know, I think of the, the inventory position we have as a normal bell-shaped distribution curve. We have 8,000 products a year, and we make too few of a handful, and we make too many of a handful. The sweet spot is in the middle. But we don't short the market on purpose. Sometimes people think that we don't make enough of a given toy because we want to hold back. That's not how we make money. We don't make money when someone can't buy our product and pay for it. We make money when they can find it and pay for it. So managing that, that bell-shaped distribution curve, particularly the inventory, which is really important in the toy business, is as much art as it is science. And we have the benefit of people who've been doing this for decades. And so that knowledge and the know-how, if you will, from a, from a strategy standpoint, that know-how or experience is really important to us. Over the last six months, your stock prices remained steady and Hasbro's has dropped significantly. What's your theory about why that has happened? Um, well, timing has a lot to do with it. You know, on, on any given fairly short period of time, one of us might be more popular than the other. And, and you can really see that in our earnings multiple. That is, what price will someone pay for the earnings power of our companies? And arguably, Hasbro had gotten a little ahead of itself. So if you looked at the multiple people were willing to pay, investors were willing to pay for the earnings of, of Hasbro, it got quite a bit higher than Mattel. I'm an, an ultimate long-term person. And if you really go back and study the history of these companies in the toy industry, they tend to revert to the mean. So one might argue that Hasbro stock got a little pricey, maybe more pricey than the company was willing was able to deliver in terms of earnings and at the same time Mattel might have been a little bit cheap relative to the earnings power of this company and now we're seeing that reversion back to the mean so uh, you know you have a lot of smart students that that end up doing this for a living and picking stocks I'm not very good at picking stocks but we do focus very much on the cash flow nature of the toy business and our position in that at Mattel and relative to the competition we've been performing well lately